It's Christmas time in the NBA, so what better time to go through some presents and get some good players on your team for cheap. We're going to talk about some buy low players that you can make a trade for and get them on your fantasy team to outperform what they've been doing. Let's go! Jordan, open! Chicago with the lead! talking about practice. LeBron James with no regard for human life. And he's going to go. Back out to Allen. History quarter. Bang! Hurry for three. Wow! Unbelievable. Making it rain in New York. We the North are now we the champions. Not the destination. It's the journey. Mamba out. G'day and welcome to the Ball Boys Fantasy Basketball Podcast. I'm your host, Mitch Casey, and you can find me on Twitter at Ball Boys Fantasy. And today we are going to go through five players who are buy low candidates at the moment that you can trade for and uh, probably not pay full price. I think these players have been frustrating the last two weeks. Uh, they are down and they are not performing to what I expect them to do for the rest of the season. So you might be able to catch a frustrated or uh, someone who's down in the stand. Standings, uh, and get these players for cheap that will help your fantasy basketball team for the rest of the season. So we are going to get stuck into it. We've got five players. Tomorrow's show, we will be doing the sell high shows. You guys probably know how this stuff works by now. So let's get stuck into the first player. And the first player here is Franz Wagner, who is, uh, who's been a bit... Up and down so far this season, he has had uh, some stretches where he's gone really, really hot, some stretches where he's been a bit eh, and recently he's probably, you know, down towards the bottom of his value, I think, in terms of overall fantasy uh, play. Um, Tipped off by today's performance, I'm recording this on Monday my time, Sunday in the US after the Sunday games, and he, in the most recent game, put up eight points, eight rebounds, and six assists with no defensive stats and no threes, and shot 21% from the field. Now, his averages over the last two weeks for France is 160th in nine category rankings, 65th in Yahoo Points League, so interesting that he's not all that far down for his points league value. It is down still for his points league value, but nowhere near to the degree that he is down for nine category rankings. Uh, And for minus one rankings, he is the 119th ranked player. So the first things here that we need to look at, over the last two weeks, he's shooting under 40% from the field. He is shooting 37.8% from the field which is pretty much the entire reason why he is a buy low at the moment. He has also not blocked a single shot in that time, and he is averaging less than one three-pointer made in that time overall. Now, he has not really ramped up the volume of three-pointers made that I had kind of hoped that he could of this season. So... That is not something that's going to jump up a heap, but if you add an extra three on top of that 0.63s that he's made for the past two weeks, that is a big change to his fantasy value. He's also a guy that I'm pretty confident in the last two years he's had, he's averaged 47% from the field and then 48% from the field, that he will not be a 38% from the field guy. For the season, he's 45. I think that is even low. I think he can be better than that. So the fact that he is averaging 45 for the season, I think that gets higher through throughout the rest of the season, and he's averaging 38 for the past two weeks, I think you can whack on another 10 percentage points onto that. And that would take his uh, points per game from 17 points per game. I think that can go north of 21 to 22 points per game uh, on the usage that he is putting up right now, which is at the moment at career high levels over his past three seasons. It's steadily climbed. Year one, it was 21%. Year two, 23%. And year uh, and, and this current year, it's 25.5%. Now, you also could throw in the in your argument that Markel Fultz is coming back into this team as well. So Wendell Carter Jr. is coming back to this team. So a couple of guys who are starters for the Orlando Magic are returning to their lineup. So you could in your uh, arguments and discussions when throwing out trade offers say that, you know, oh, you're a little bit worried about those kind of things and how it's going to affect him and, and use that to your advantage in trying to pull off a trade. I don't think it matters too much when those guys come back. I think that the offense will still obviously run between, uh, run through him and Paolo. 
And it really is just the fact that he is averaging 38% from the field of the last couple of weeks. The scoring is down at 17 per game at that time. I think that can bump up another five points per game. The field goal percentage is going to rise up in that time as well. And the threes, I think, also have an ability to rise up as well on top of that. And whilst he's not a big shot blocker, not averaging, not having a single block in that time also, going up from zero to 0.2 or 0.3, uh, I think is reasonable to expect. And and again, when you're looking at those ranking numbers, can sway those numbers as well. So I do think that that has a chance to also bump up a little bit in, in that time. If you are... If you, if you just fix those sort of things, that really is the difference between him being sort of the 160th ranked player over the last two weeks and sort of a top 60 guy, which is about where we had him in the preseason. And I think he has a chance to continue to improve and get there so far this year. So I do think that he is a pretty, maybe obvious uh, by low, but you throw in those couple of additions of those things, those guys coming back in Fultz and Wendell, and you might have a, a decent argument to maybe pry him away from uh, someone who's been a bit frustrated with his performances recently. He's 73rd overall in the season. I actually think he can be um, you know, higher than that in terms of a nine category rankings. Um, and he's still a young player and they usually do get better. Those young guys are uh, the second half of the season. So I'm pretty, pretty confident that he is a buy low candidate. The next player here is Walker Kessler. Maybe not as much confidence in this one, but... What is going on with Walker Kessler? Over the last two weeks, he's the 88th ranked player in nine category rankings. He's the 92nd ranked player in Yahoo Points League. And he's 75th in minus one, which, look, is not all that bad on the season. This is an improvement, actually, but I still think he can go even higher. Um, He is obviously, with these numbers, still a disappointment from where he was drafted. And I still think that that will end up being the case. But... What is going on here with Walker Kessler? Well, the number one thing here that a lot of people are frustrated about is the fact that he is getting dicked around when it comes to his starting role versus his minutes and all those sort of things. So in the past week, he did have a game where he had seven blocks in that time. So in the last two weeks, he is actually averaging three blocks per game, but still ranked in nine category rankings just at 88th overall. The reason that he is down that low is because, number one, his field goal percentage is only at 55%, which is good, but it is not the 72% that he was from the field last season. So he is down 17 percentage points um, compared to last season. Now, I don't know if he's going to get back up to that 70% mark, but I do think he could be better than 55%. I think he's a guy who's definitely at least going to crack into the 60% uh, range. And maybe instead of 72, he's more like 62. But jump up seven percentages points you know, uh, higher and you are going to see a bump up in your rankings. His minutes have to go higher. I don't know what they are doing right now with the just chopping and changing a Linux starting, um, you know, Yurtsevin starting, all this rubbish. But the Utah Jazz are not going anywhere really right now. They've got a poor record and Walker Kessler is one of their younger pieces and he has to feature more on the uh, floor in terms of minutes played than he has the last few games. And I do think that you can get him pretty cheap because of the frustration that managers will be feeling right now in the inconsistency of his minutes. Now, you might be you might have to weather that for a little while to reap the rewards, but I do think in the long run, the young guys on this Utah Jazz team will uh, benefit the most. They have the most reason to be playing big minutes down the stretch the second half of this season. And Walker Kessler is one of their bright spots, I think, of the future of this team moving forward. There's a few little trade rumors, Larry Markin and John Collins and things like that, just starting to appear. Now, I don't ever... You know, this far out, especially trade guys with those trade rumors in uh, in mind. But it's more just to say that I think that the young players like a Kessler, like a Keontae George, um, are going to be the players that feature more heavily come January, February, and March. And he's been disappointing so far. And remember, the blocks do skew his rankings a little bit. And if you don't need blocks, you probably don't need Walker Kessler in category leagues. Uh, In points leagues, though, I still think he can be better. The rebounds can be higher as the minutes also climb up. The points should, whilst not skyrocket, they will come up as well when the minutes come up and the field goal percentage improves as also... And all these things combined have me still believing that compared to what he's done so far, especially with the fluctuations in minutes, that he can be better than what he has been. But be aware that it might require some patience and, um, you know, 
You might lose out in the short term, but I do think you'll win in the long term with a player like Walker Kessler. Again, if you don't need blocks, if you're punting blocks or punting field goal percentage or both, you don't need Walker Kessler. So it, it is kind of specific in category leagues. In points leagues, though, I think you can be better. And if you are looking for those blocks or rebounds or field goal percentage, then this guy is someone you can get cheaper than I think he will produce moving forward. The third player on the list here is a player who... I think he's one of two players now that has appeared on both the buy low and sell high shows. So Herb Jones was a sell high, uh, I think a couple of weeks ago, not not too far ago. He was a sell high, putting up crazy defensive numbers. And of course, as these things do, it has leveled out. And over the past two weeks, he's the 131st ranked player in nine category rankings, the 142nd ranked player in Yahoo points leagues, and 155th when it comes to minus one rankings. What's changed? Well, instead of, you know, for the season averaging 1.7 steals per game, he's averaged one steal per game in the last six. 0.7 blocks compared to 1.1 on the season. He's also scoring less uh, and shooting more uh, uh, more poorly from the field at 41.7% versus 48.7%. Now, he, in the last two seasons, has averaged 47.5 and 47% from the field. So his um, season average of 48.7, I think, is more likely to represent what he's going to do for the year. It might still be a little bit high. He was shooting um, pretty hot there for a little while um, and giving you some unexpected points and scoring that he probably was never going to keep up when he was a sell high a little while ago. But he is also not going to be as bad as he has been more recently. So I think the answer lies somewhere in the middle there where he is probably going to, when everything's all said and done, score between 10 and 11 and a half points per game, basically. ten Between 10 and 11 points, essentially, is where I sort of have him there for the points category. I also think that the steals, he's an elite steals guy. Last year, 1.6. Year before, 1.7. And for the season of 1.7, That has a chance to stick, but what we do know about steals and for blocks, those low-volume categories, is they can fluctuate week to week, and that is something to always remember when it comes to ranking players in that uh, way, especially in a head-to-head league. In a roto, it makes a little bit more sense to value them in the way that the um, sort of regular ranking systems does. But for steals and blocks, they will fluctuate. Some weeks, he might be averaging three steals. Some weeks, he might be averaging half a steal or one steal per game. You're going to be up and down. But I do think when all things are all said and done, if you can get someone for... If you can get Herb Jones for someone outside the top 110 uh, or top 100, I would even say, I would absolutely go ahead and do it because I still believe he is one of the better defensive stat accumulators. He is someone that can give you... You know, two to three steals, uh, sorry, two to three assists per game as well. You know, four rebounds, a three. He's got some good ability to contribute across the board. He doesn't hurt you from either percentage, free throw, or f- or from the field. And he's a low turnover guy if you if you uh, factor that in. So he's not hurting you in any one area. Plus, he has the elite ability in those defensive stats that I still think is there. He just hasn't done it in the last couple of games. I think because of how good he is defensively, his minutes are fairly safe on this team. Um, now that is not a certainty because there are some good pieces on this team with Trey Murphy, uh, Zion, Brandon Ingram, Fallon Tunis is playing well, CJ McCollum. Like there's, there's five or six guys there that do deserve starters or 30 plus minutes per game. And Herb may be the guy that loses out. I, I actually don't think he should, but he might. Um, that being said though, I, I, I doubt it. I, I think it's a small chance, but the risk is there. So keep that in mind. Um, but I do think that if you can get him for someone outside the top 100, I think you jump on it and absolutely pull the trigger there if you're looking for those defensive stats. And a Yahoo Points League, it's not as it's not as uh, a slam dunk pick. He's more of a back-end guy. So unless you're giving up someone like your worst player in your team, then I don't really think he's much of a buy-low candidate. Or if you're in a deeper league, you might be able to, to sneak him a, a, bit, a little bit of a buy-low, but not as relevant for points leagues. But definitely for category leagues, he is a buy-low, I believe. The next player here is frustrating as all hell, but DeAndre Ayton is, I still believe, a buy low. Now, I actually drafted him in my uh, Fantasy Basketball International World Cup team, and he pisses me off, man. He really frustrates me because he says he's going to come in and dominate the season. Dominate, and he called himself, and he's been worse than ever, I I, I do think. And I do think he's going to be a bit of a disappointment when it comes to when we're looking back on the season. But... 
Over the last two weeks, 143rd in nine category rankings, 152nd when it comes to Yahoo points. This is per game, by the way, 135th in minus one, plus the fact that he missed those three games with the concussion. Uh, well, no, he wasn't a concussion. What, what was his... Uh, he was out... I can't remember exactly why he was out. Uh, concussion was Jeremy Grant. He missed three games, essentially. Came back. The minutes were low in that first game because of a blowout uh, against the Utah Jazz. Um, he only played 21 minutes in this game, that, that game. And the more recent games, he just the usage has just been shit. It's honestly uh, really bad. He got up five field goal attempts, eight field goal attempts. Um, so in the last two games, the efficiency is fine. Not elite as it normally would be for DeAndre Ayton. And he's just... Um, is just is so average, man. But the rankings that you see up on the screen here on YouTube that I read out before, like that again, 143rd, 90 cat, 152nd, Yahoo points, 135th, minus one. He has, a, he has an ability to, you know, go up another oh, 50 to 60 spots on rankings when it comes to these players here. So if you can get him for someone outside the top 80 or 90, I would 100% do that. Um, with the understanding that I don't know if he's going to be a top 50 or 60 player, but he should still be at least a top 80 guy, I believe. Um, As boring and as basic of a big man player he is, there is definitely still some value in the fact that he is a guy that can give you, you know, 10 to 11 rebounds on 60% from the field with not quite, but nearly a block per game um, and doesn't hurt you from the free throw percentage. That has some use. It's boring as shit, and he's definitely a disappointment, but he is not this bad as he has been the last two weeks, and a lot of people hate him, myself included, but we also have to recognize that he is going to be better than this moving forward. So if you can, if you've got someone who views him and is as frustrated with how he plays as I am, you might be able to execute a buy low uh, for DeAndre Ayton. And the final player that we're going to talk about here on the buy low show is Michael Porter Jr., who... Uh, started off the season very strongly, and, and even last game, it was decent without being spectacular. So his most recent game, he had 20 points, 4 threes, and 11, re- 11 rebounds, but no other stats, um, and didn't do it very efficiently either. He only shot 44% from the field, and over the last two weeks, he is the 117th ranked player at 9-cat, 114th in Yahoo points, and 129th in minus 1. He is a better 9-cat guy than he is a minus 1 ranking player, so for head-to-head leagues, that Yahoo ranking or the ranking you might see in other areas, I don't think is truly reflective of his value. However, the reason he is doing so poorly is over the last two weeks, he is shooting 45.2% from the field, which doesn't sound too bad, but this guy is definitely close to a 50% shooter, I believe. And he's also uh, a little bit down when it comes to his defensive stats, 0.3 steals and 0.5 blocks. Those can both come up close to one per game as well. Um, the usage is down a little bit as well. So over the last two weeks, he's averaging 18.8% in usage. For the season, he's at 21.1%. Last year, he was at 23%. So you do have a few things happening here. Obviously, Jamal Murray is back into the team, but he's been kind of in and out. He's just been a little bit more passive. And and I think that there's a number of reasons this could be happening. One of them... Um, being that there was a blowout in the last game against Brooklyn, he wasn't needed to do too much, so that affects his two-game or two-week average, where he only put up eight field goal attempts and only put, only put up nine points. Um, he had a very stinking game against the Atlanta Hawks, where he shot less than ten percent from the field. He went one of uh, he went one of eleven from the field. Very very poor field goal percentage, which drags his numbers back down. But a couple of decent games around that: twenty points, seventeen points. 20 points as well, uh, three, two, and four threes in all of those games. So he's he's not a super versatile fantasy player. Points, threes, rebounds. He can give you a decent uh, a number of blocks here and there as well. He's efficient from the field, doesn't turn the ball over a lot. So it's a lot of those little things that maybe don't catch your eye quite as much, and they might not be catching the eye of the player who drafted him as well thinking that he was going to go back to that top, I don't know, 40 guy or 30 guy that he was uh, a few seasons ago um, where everyone got burned by him. But I do think that he can be better than that, especially when you're looking at these rankings over the last two weeks. I still believe that he is ranked for the season on nine category rankings at 63rd. 
Um, and all of those numbers that he's putting up for the season, his season averages, I think are definitely maintainable despite Jamal Murray coming back and this team being a bit more healthy. I think he can continue to do what he's been doing. And um, maybe even a scope to improve a little bit. Last season, he was at three threes per game. That can come up a little bit as well. It's the rebounding that's really improved a lot for him this season. Um, And I don't really see why that would change. They are crashing the glass a little bit more aggressively, both he and Aaron Gordon. Um, So I think the season where he's the 63rd ranked player overall in nine cat, remember, minus one, he's probably closer to the 80 zone, 75, 80 zone. If you can get him for someone, you know, around that 100 mark rankings, um, 90 to 100, I think that I would do that and pull the trigger because I, I just think he's a really solid player. He has a very established role in a championship level team. And it's it's literally just a couple of blowout games where he hasn't, you know, put up many shots. One really poor game where he shot an absolute terrible 1 of 11 from the field. And that is resulting in his recent two-week average uh, outside the top uh, 110. So I do believe that that can correct itself very, very easily. And he can be coming back to very much closer to what he's been doing on the entire season. So those are our buy low players there, guys. Not not too many options. I was trying to have a look today. There's a, f- a lot of players that were buy lows until their most recent game. And I do try to pick players that haven't, you know, even if their average of the last two weeks is poor, if they had a really big game recently, it usually slams that buy low window shut quite quickly. So a couple of different options. They might also continue to pop up over the next week. So let me know down in the comment section below if you have any buy low players that you think are worth pursuing on a trade. What you what you what are my thoughts on them? And uh, I'll let you guys know. And tomorrow we will have a sell high show where we'll go through five players that are outperforming what I expect them to do. These ones are always a little bit easier to spot but harder to execute. So until then guys, I'll see you next time. Give this video a big thumbs up. Bye! Yeah.